it may seem like, oh, it's fun. It's just glamorous. Like, sis is just getting from the camera, just like being cute and getting on the gram and like slaying, you know? <laughs> Don't hide me. It's Cameron the K, and I'm coming to you guys with a new video. I'm really excited because I asked you guys in my last vlog. If you haven't seen that vlog, I will link it in the cards. But I asked y'all if you want to see more sit down videos because I've been craving more, like, I don't know, informative, valuable sit down content, and I have so much tea I want to spill. So, you know what? I said on Tuesdays, I'm not saying every Tuesday now, don't hold me, don't, don't hold me accountable. Don't hold me accountable. But um, um, on Tuesdays, I want to talk about the behind the scenes of influencer life. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. If you guys have any ideas, leave me some comments down below. But where I share things like how I plan campaign shoots, which I'll be talking about today, how I plan my content per month, how I edit my videos, etc. And then don't worry, on Thursdays, I plan on still talking about influencer contracts and then Sundays, weekly vlogs. So that would be like my dream schedule. No pressure though. I'm not committed quite yet, but... That's the goal right now. Without further ado, let's get into this influencer tea, okay? <laughs> okay, y'all, let me start by saying being an influencer content creator, however you would like to term it, can definitely be a lot. It may seem like, oh, it's fun, it's just glamorous, like sis is just getting from the camera and just like being cute and getting on the gram and like slaying, you know, <laughs> don't hide me. But it's a lot of work behind the scenes from reaching out to brands to making sure your content is organic and authentic and interacting with your audience and having a, i.e. being a photographer and a makeup artist and a hairstylist. So many other elements into what you all see when it, whether it's a YouTube video or like an Instagram post, it's a lot of behind the scenes y'all. So I'm excited to kind of reveal the tea. So the first thing I like to do is of course, review the contract when the brand sends over. So I'm not gonna talk about pitching in this video or like the initial process that to get to the brand to work with you, not in this video, but if that's something you wanna see, let me know in the comment section below so I can really tell y'all some, okay? I'm but anyway, so in this scenario, we've already been contacted by the brand or we've already contacted the brand. They've already said how much they love our content. We said we love them. They sent the product, we've tried it out and we are ready to start this collaboration and this campaign with the brand. So usually what the brand sends over, of course, is the contract. So once everything has been solidified via email, please, 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 please do everything via email. If a brand reaches out to you via direct message or DM, make sure you say, hey, thank you so much for reaching out. I would absolutely love to talk about potential collaboration or partnership. Please reach out to me via email and I would be glad to further discuss. Or you can say, I do not discuss partnerships in direct messages, but I would be glad to discuss it in emails. I just get them out of the DMs, y'all. For one, I feel like people just tend to be a lot more professional and um, you can weed people out by sending them to your email. There are some brands that reach out and then I tell them, hey, you need to contact me via email and they're like, they don't say nothing. So that to me is a red flag and that's an automatic out for me. But it's not an automatic out just because they simply like reach out to me via DM, but if they don't follow up via email, I'm sorry. Respectfully, it's a no for me, dog. So, great. You've reviewed your contract. I'm going to do a whole video on how I review my contracts. I'm working on an ebook so that you all can literally have exactly how I, as a lawyer, review my contracts, look for red flags, highlight things, redact, revise. I will have that coming very soon, so stay tuned. So we reviewed our contract. It's all good, signed, sealed, delivered. And now they send their brand guide or their guidelines. So brands will send you a script essentially of what their campaign is going to be, what they desire it to look like, what type of content you need to produce. This can look a variety of different ways. So of course it'll have like the campaign title, it'll give you a description of the brand, a description of the product and or products that they're going to send you. You want to read this guide from start to finish almost honestly I would say as thoroughly as you read a contract because there's nothing worse than you missing one thing whether it's something you need to say in the video content or an aspect of the photo that you didn't do like for me for example I worked with a brand and I forgot to turn on the product I completely missed that in the branding guide and I had to reshoot yes reshooting is a real thing no you shouldn't be agreeing to doing like three or four reshoots my max is usually two 
unless it's like a blatant thing that I myself um, completely disregarded after reading the brand guide. So you wanna make sure you are reading that from start to finish and then reading it again. And I always have my branding guide right next to me while I'm shooting the content or easily accessible so that I can, okay, double check, did I say the right things? And it's not that I'm saying exactly what they need me to say. So let me clarify that. I think there's this misconception and I can't speak for all influencers, but there's this misconception that we're required to say like, exactly word for word what they tell it like girl bye y'all know i get on here i like the kiki who's gonna know what my audience likes to hear better than me so the brand that you're working with should trust your opinion and should trust your judgment when it comes to you thoroughly explaining the products and getting your audience excited and wanting to purchase the product better than them just giving you a script and you reading like sure it's a form of a commercial essentially when you're doing advertising marketing in the influencer marketing space but it's not a commercial in the sense that you're reading it verbatim sure there may be some triggering words that you do need to say like i need to make sure i say the product name right <laughs> and exactly the ingredients in it and things that they want to highlight within that product so i recently worked with a skincare company and in that they wanted to make sure i said that it was a retinol alternative because it wasn't just a retinol serum it was a retinol alternative so those are important things that of course I had to make sure that I said correctly but as far as like the exact caption no ma'am yes you need to send it in for review but again I'll talk about that in a moment so make sure you read that guide up down backwards sideways there's a few different things you want to look out for in the guide first of course you want to look out the name of the product what's all in it and then what content you need to produce for them of course you can find that on your contract as well but a lot of times it's also on the guide and it's quicker to see it so I'm like, okay, great. At minimum, I know for X brand, I need to produce one in feed YouTube video, one in feed Instagram post, and three to five IG story frames, right? So the story frames are those 15 second clips you see in, in anyone's Instagram story. So I'm like, great. One post, three to five Instagram story frames. Write that down. So I know at minimum, this is what I need to produce. What's the product? It is a, let's just go with the serum. It's a, skin, it's a skincare brand and they wanted me to focus on their new serum that they're coming out with. Then I take a step back and I write down the things that I really enjoyed about that serum. I just write a few different things, what I liked, what my skin, how my skin reacted, just so that I'm remembering like in that moment while I'm in the content creating and content creative direction space to know what I want to highlight for me and make sure that of course it aligns with what they want to highlight, but I have to give my own personal customized touch to it because that's why the brand reached out to me, you know, and reached out to you. They reached out to you for a reason. They love your personality. They love the quality of your content. They want to reach your audience. So all of those three things, in order for them to do so, they're going to trust your judgment and trust what you're going to be able to produce. So I like to add my little touch there. So great. That's pretty much it with the branding guide. And then I go back to it when I'm thinking about the caption. Sometimes I even think of the caption before I shoot. Um, but that's, I wouldn't say it's rare, but it just happens. Sometimes I think of the caption first and then shoot around that. But sometimes it's vice versa. It just really depends on... My creative mindset in the moment like how how what's going on man what what is it <laughs> so the next step is i review inspiration on pinterest and instagram so on instagram you can save posts and create different collections or folders and that's what i do i have like a general 2021 mood board which just has exactly like the kind of content that i want to be able to produce for my page so what i'll do is i'll look on instagram and pinterest like i said and i will screenshot those specific photos that I want to utilize for this specific campaign. And then I will use those as reference while I'm shooting. Sometimes I don't need to do the inspo. I just like have it, but I do like just seeing it as a reference. So I can say, okay, this is like the style photo. How can I tweak it and customize it to make it my own? I'm not gonna completely replicate the photo. Like that's, I'm me and they're them and what they do works for them. So what can I do to get this style image, but still make sure that it screams me and my audience can relate to this. Okay, great. So we have our three to five inspiration picks, whether it's from Pinterest or Instagram. Now it's time to sit down and create. But even before then, I like to plan the creative concept to execute it. What does that look like? If it's a video, I get really, really detailed. I could probably do a whole other video on like creating video content, but I want to write down each video clip that I need especially for like reels or even IGTV for smaller video content. Honestly, for any video content, you know, scratch it. Any video content, <laughs> I like to play in the clips. So for example, for the recent post that I did, the brand I'm 
talking about with the skincare is I knew I wanted to get a clip that represented things that I was going to speak about in the reel. So I knew I was gonna talk about spring is approaching. Um, I wanna show a clip of like my calendar showing the date because spring is coming up very soon. I wanted to show the sun has been shining. So I went outside and got a clip of like the sun. I wanted to show that my skin has been flourishing and then show my skin in the natural sunlight. So I knew those, those were some clips that I needed to capture in order for me to, at the end of the day, put it all together into a seamless, beautiful piece of content. So I make sure I have all those clips down. I write them down so then I can mark them off. I love a good cross off, mark off, check, 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 we done, complete. <laughs> I love it. So I write that down in a notebook and then I cross it out as I go double check it and make sure I have everything I need and then of course go back to that branding guide. I constantly have the branding guide with me so that I can reference it and go through it. Sometimes I print it out or sometimes I just have it on my laptop but it's very 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 helpful. If you don't take nothing from me, read that branding guide, well read your contract, but read the branding guide very very closely. So your content is created, now it's time to edit. So there's lots of different editing softwares. Whenever I'm doing vertical content, so on Instagram, I tend to lean towards using InShot. It's an app, I absolutely love it. When it comes to Instagram stories, I love using Unfold, and I pay for both the premium level of those uh, subscription services because it really helps make my content creation process a little bit more seamless. I just love the format of both of those apps. I do sometimes use iMovie when I'm creating vertical content as well, but y'all know I use iMovie for YouTube or any type of horizontal video content that I'm creating. Those are kind of like the three main apps when it comes to video content. I also love to use Facetune when it comes to photos. I don't do crazy touch-ups because honestly, it's just not, you want it to be organic and authentic and real, especially with skincare. I don't even touch my face or touch anything with skincare because I just think that I would feel like I'm lying. <laughs> That's just me. But um, I use it maybe to wipe my teeth a little bit. Of course, if I'm doing like a teeth whitening, I wouldn't do that. But just on like occasion or like in the background, like say there's like a smudge on the wall, I may wipe that out or patch it out, something like that. Blur out the background a little bit more, etc. Those are just kind of small touches that I do. Maybe I might do a little detail on my um, eyelashes to make them look a little bit more bowls, things like that. Very, very, very small things that I tend to do on my photos. And then if I want to add like a preset, I've been using, I don't really use presets, but sort of kind of um, that I create on my own. I wanna get more into presets, I feel like. I really like the way people's profiles look when it is seamless, but I don't want to overthink that because here's a little pro tip in here. I think what's more important is consistency and actually putting content out and posting the content rather than focusing too much time on curating the perfect feed. Um, I remember when I tried to do like the perfect feed and curate this perfect content that I just wasn't posting as much and my consistency wasn't there. So I'd rather be consistent and excited about my content and post it rather than so just worried about the logistics of what does it look like, is it cute, da, da. You know, if it's a great photo, it's a great photo, whether it's a little darker than the other photo, a little lighter, et cetera, like, Personally, that's just that's just me and that's just my preference for now. But you know, that may change. Maybe later on I'm like, oh, preset queen. Seamless me, I want everything synchronized and colorized. <laughs> also for photos, I like to use Lightroom. I feel like everyone uses Lightroom and that's kind of where I use like the preset thing that I've been doing. Again, it's very bootleg preset. Essentially, if I have four photos and like a carousel, I'm gonna have all of those have the same preset. So I'll edit the first video, edit the first photo, copy and paste that onto the rest of the photos. So that's kind of what I do. Honestly, on the iPhone, if you have iPhone, I have the iPhone 12 Pro Max. You can use the auto, sometimes just doing the auto or like doing a little quick brightness on just in the app, like in your photos, like editing within the app is really helpful too. I do that sometimes and honestly, sometimes the lighting is so good, I don't even edit. There's been several photos, especially lately, I haven't even edited. I just am like, it's great how it is, let me just put it up on Instagram. Okay, so now everything is created and edited and you're finally on the last stretch and I usually, like I said, sometimes I do the caption first, but I go and finish up the caption at this stage. I have all the content done. Sometimes I even change up the original caption that I first thought of by seeing the images in place and seeing how it all came together. Write the caption out, make sure I have the right tags when it comes to the brands, the right hashtags within the caption. Make sure the caption is structured correctly. If you have spaces, I use my captions. I just type them all in my notes on my app, on my iPhone first then copy and paste it in Instagram and I haven't had any problems with like spacing issues and I always make sure there's a call to action call to action even if it's working with a brand because I want to get that engagement and like that I'm talking to y'all because think about it if I post something and I just say you know hey I love this product da, 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 and I don't ask y'all nothing what y'all gonna say 
What y'all gonna say? What are you gonna say? Nothing. Always utilize your caption. This is your time. You're captivating your audience. Tell them to do something. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So tell them in the caption. And again, make sure you guys are referencing that brand guidelines and guide that they gave you to make sure you are hitting all the points and all the targets that you need to in order to have the perfect caption with your content that you created for them. All right, we have three more steps in this long step. I don't even know if I'm gonna like say how many steps, like step one, step two, we'll know. But so the next step is to submit it for review. There are so many different ways you can do this. Some brands have a specific platform in which you need to submit your content. Other brands are like, oh, just send it via email. I like to create um, folders on Google Drive so I can just send them the link and then I can update it and customize it. And it's a lot quicker because sometimes the files that you're sending over are really large. So if you're sending like video content, just put it in Google Drive, anybody got time, or Dropbox or something like that. It's a reshoot, that's gonna be the next step. So you submit it for review, then they get feedback. So either they're saying, oh, I love this, or maybe tweak one thing. Sometimes they'll say, recently I had one, I didn't have to reshoot. They just wanted me to make sure that I added a certain hashtag that I forgot. It happens or they wanted me to make sure that I stated something very specific it was um, with Dove and in the product they had ceramide renewals which help you with retaining moisture and things of that nature which I, I love I really love their products it was a Dove body wash y'all Dove body wash the pampering one it smells good child she smelled like shea butter vanilla and goals okay <laughs> but seriously I really love the product but I meant to say I said ceramides instead of ceramide renewals so they wanted to make sure that I even re either restated that in the video did like a voiceover or made sure that I put like an asterisk and set it over on top of the video in words so people would know it's not ceramides it's ceramide renewals so things like that that was a small little tweak I don't mind doing things like that all right so you've made the changes necessary and what is next next is to post and this may seem like the easiest part, but sometimes this can be extremely tedious. You wanna make sure again that everything is exactly how you sent it to them, right? So some of these opportunities and these collaborations and partnerships happen months in advance. So I may shoot the content in January, submit it for a review, and I'm waiting for the content to go live in March. So that's a long time. There's a lot of things that happen in between there. There's other partnerships and opportunities that happen in between there. So by the time you're like, okay, great, I need to post for this company today. It's like, what the heck were the hashtags, the swipe up link, and that's another thing. You wanna make sure you got the swipe up link. But in all the things, you wanna make sure it's in the right order because Lord forbid, Say you have three Instagram story frames and the second one you miss something, you have to delete and then start over. You know what I'm saying? So it's just frustrating. It's frustrating. So you wanna make sure you have it correct the first time so you're not having to re-upload anything because that also kind of changes the algorithm when you re-upload something or you change the caption and you tweak something or you add a different hashtag, it can restart that algorithm and you may have already been on a good traction and then you just kind of stop that. It can be tedious. Again, it's not like this, we're not doing surgery, okay? It's, it ain't that difficult. But it is tedious and it still is a job and it still has to be done correctly because you are representing not only your brand, but now you're representing another brand as well. And also, if you really like the brand, you may want to turn this into a long-term opportunity, a long-term partnership. So as you see, there are a lot of things that go behind the scenes before we get to the post. And this doesn't even include just you creating your organic content that aren't sponsored or you interacting with your audience or you pitching to brands and trying to get noticed by brands, which is like a whole nother tea you know and things like that so make sure you guys thumbs up this video if you enjoyed and leave me some comments down in the comment section below subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i will see you guys in my next video love you guys later